Time to break down the Notre Dame tight end room. Uh, Notre Dame returns Michael Mayer, George Takis, and Kevin Bauman and has a pair of early enrollees at the position in Kane Barong and Mitchell Evans. So, Lou, kind of opening thoughts on this position group. Tight end U is just continuing with, with Michael Mayer. Yeah, there's, there's very few schools who can lose a junior for the second straight year to the NFL draft like they did with uh, Tommy Tremble the year after Cole Komet also went pro and a former top 50 recruit like Brock Wright graduating as a senior. Yet the position is still considered a strength because with Michael Mayer, I, I'm comfortable and confident in saying that he can rival pretty much anybody in the country right now as a sophomore uh, among the best. And I would not be surprised if he does receive some preseason All-American notice. Um, you know, I, to my knowledge, going back now 50 years uh, and the first year of freshman eligibility in 1972, I believe he's the first freshman in Notre Dame history to lead a team in receiving. You know, Michael Floyd caught 48, but there was a guy named uh, Golden Tate also in that uh, uh, he was a sophomore in 2008. And Duval Kamara caught 32, but uh, the previous year, and but John Carlson, the tight end, caught 40. So he and Mayer and Javon McKinley caught 42 apiece, but it, it was just the toughness. When you just saw him on the field, the way he fills out a uniform, you just see somebody you sense that just walked out of a pro camp or something like that because he is just so advanced and the thing that just I, I always amazed me was thinking this guy a year ago was competing against high school kids and i just felt for whoever had to tackle him when he would be in the open field because that is that's a man already as a freshman. What about him as a defensive end? Because he played both sides of the ball. Yeah. Being a yeah. high school quarterback in Kentucky um, would not have been good um, there. Um, I mean, do you think there could be much of a sophomore slump here? Because he's not going to come as a surprise anymore. The athletic first team, all true freshman, one accolade that he got I love. Um, was the all ACC academic team? Um, I mean, it, teams are going to key on him. But if I'm a defensive coordinator, thank God I'm not um, for any school. But you know, the the biggest passing threat right now is is Michael Mayer. So I would stop him first and see what Notre Dame has a receiver. Yeah, I mean, statistically, he might have the kind of season where somebody might say, well, I was expecting a little bit more, and this is where it's going to be very important for the wide receiver core to pick up that slack. Because like, like you said, um, Avery Davis caught 24 passes last year. He's in the slot, but it's a lot of unproven uh, areas there. So... That, that's going to be the first priority for defensive coordinators. So you got to take away number 87 in, in the passing game and let's see what else that they have. So it's going to be very pivotal for the wide receiver core to emerge. And I, I'm definitely not expecting nearly as many three tight end sets this year as Nordame had. Uh, the, you, you just don't see that. When you look at an Alabama or Clemson and Ohio State, they're going to have a very good tight end always in the lineup. That's just how they recruit. But their base offense is going to be a lot more centered on sp splitting a lot of speed and wide receivers out wide. Uh, you're not going to be challenged maybe as much vertically when you're going to, into these three tight end formations. Uh, they did build the identity around that, but um, this is going to be a good test also for Tommy Reese as an offensive coordinator because he, as any good coordinator, did he built around the strengths last year, which were a veteran, the most veteran returning offensive line in school history, a strong contingent of tight ends, and a three-year starter at, at quarterback. Um, this year, 
you hope that it evolves now where the wide receivers and then a very strong running back core um, can take on more of the emphasis this season while the offensive line and the new quarterback settle in. Now the other two returning guys, Kevin Bauman um, played some as a true freshman, obviously retained his eligibility um, with, with the weird free COVID year deal. Um, had, had thought he filled out the uniform nice as well. Um, Kevin Bauman seems like a nice player. George Takis um, is probably, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the X factors, but he seems like one that, you know, he came in as a four-star guy um, from Naples, Florida, kind of wondering, can he be that number two guy that, um, you know, Tommy Tremble behind Cole Komet was like, can he have that kind of season? Well, he came the same year as Tommy Tremble. And George was the four star and Tommy was the three star. Now, part of that was because Tommy was injured as a high school senior, missed a lot of time. But uh, I've said this many times, George Takis is a recruit who would be starting at a lot of power five programs. But when you're at tight end you, you have to kind of wait your turn. I, I anticipate that and hope he can be at least a Brock Wright type of figure where there's a comfort in multiple tight end formations. And look, there are even some four tight end sets last year with Takis in the mix as well there. So you root for a guy like that because he's patiently waited his turn. Uh, he has his opportunity now this year to be uh, an influential part of the offense uh, because Notre Dame I think still wants to regularly use multiple tight ends. I don't think they're going to force it if they believe they can succeed more with more wideouts or possibly even have both Kyron Williams and Chris Tyree on the field at the same time. Uh, like I said, I, I'm not anticipating the multiple tight end sense nearly as much as last year. And when I say multiple, I'm talking either about three or four tight ends, but this is George Takis's time, and this is somebody you want to see have at least that Brock Wright type of impact this year where he, he's reliable week after week and maybe can provide even more. So Michael Mayer bust onto the scene as a true freshman was inserted into the lineup. If Notre Dame does go three or four deep at times at tight end, you might see, or especially if they go four deep, you're going to see um, a true freshman tight end there unless they have a, a walk-on that they would put in there. But uh, So let's touch on a couple of these true freshmen. Uh, Mitchell Evans, 6'7", 240, um, a, a developmental big guy. You know, people always say, yeah, he's, he's got this athleticism. Could he, you know, end up being like the next tight end who, you know, changes into an offensive tackle? So – my expectation, not I don't have super high expectations for Mitchell Evans this season. If he does uh, make an impact on the field, that would be a, a pleasant surprise. But I'm hearing good things about Kane Brong. He's listed at 6'3", 215. I've heard that that's a very old listing. His height, he's probably about 6'3 and a half. Maybe he's cl getting close to 6'4". But that weight, he's actually closer to 240, 245. Um, all of these guys are at Notre Dame. Kane Barong is a guy who was, you know, the number one tight end in the country um, early in 2019. He ran a 4-5 laser time um, in San Antonio at the All-American Bowl Combine. And he was just the next greatest thing. Um, and, you know, everyone had such uh, hype for him. Commits to Notre Dame. And then just kind of drops, drops, drops. Just kind of is is not this the new shiny toy anymore. I see that a lot of times when recruits are the the big thing early. A lot of times they just kind of slip through the cracks, especially if they commit early. So I'm a Kane Barong believer. Um, I'll say it right now, and I told this to the rivals analysts when it was kind of time for ranking updates. I was like, look, I'm biased as hell when it comes to Kane Barong. I just am. I know all of his family by name. Like I, I, I just love the kid and have seen him so many times. So I'm biased, but I've also been able to gather a lot of information on him because I've seen him four or five times in person. And 
um, future 50, which is the, you know, 50 top, you know, um, would, would that be rising uh, or, or guys going into their senior season? I think that camp was, this was in Orlando, Florida, uh, before the pandemic, a couple months before um, that started. And um, he looked fantastic then just burning, you know, and there's a USC linebacker commit Rajon Davis there torched him. Um, I'm going on a spiel here and, and saying Kane Brong, I honestly, Lou, can see him being the number three tight end and maybe, just maybe, he might be the number two guy. I know that's kind of a, a bold thing to say. I, I could see him as the number two guy behind Michael Mayer. Look, Mitchell Evans, like we said, he's a little bit more of a project guy. I would be surprised if he busts onto the scene and makes a, a, a in, into the you know the top two or three guys this season. Kevin Bauman's a nice player. Don't know much about him. George Takis, we still don't know much about him. He had three or four catches last season. Kane Barong, I mean, it's it's up. This number two tight end spot, it's up for grabs for anybody, really. Uh, I hope there's a safety net on, you know, underneath that limb that you just went out on there on that high tree. Yeah, that, that's a pretty bold prediction there. Um, I, I think a guy I need to talk about a little bit more, though, is Kevin Bauman. Because last fall, August, there, there were, I believe, five, six guys in the freshman class that Brian Kelly specifically singled out. And he doesn't like to do that because then, you know, it's going to create maybe some undue expectations. Undoubtedly, Michael Mayer was one of them. And that was just one of those, you have no fear of bringing him up because you just know this is somebody extremely special. The others that were brought up and, you know, we, we said, where did he come from? Clarence Lewis. It's like, wow, he, there is almost comparisons to Kavari Russell. This guy is going to play. And by the end of the season, he did move ahead of um, Tariq Bracey at the field cornerback position. He brought up a couple of defensive linemen, Jordan Botello and Riley Mills. And Riley Mills, I think he could be the st starting strong side. And we'll get to that in a future show, though. But that's somebody who really started emerging. But the fifth guy, and I forgot, Chris Turi, also right. a Tyree at the running back. He was he's going to play, and he moved up to number two right away. But the sixth guy, Kevin Bauman, and Brian Kelly went out of his way saying, "Look, if Michael Mayer isn't in this class, we would just be raving about holy smokes, Kevin Bauman. He he's ready to play. We got to get him in in some way. So now he has that opportunity as well." after a full uh, fall and uh, now spring to be able to just emerge plus a year in a college strength and conditioning program. A good size here too, about six, four and a half. I'm sure he's getting closer to that 250 range. So um, we're anticipating that here's somebody else at tight end you who will be in the mix. So here am I here I am talking about the the new shiny toys and I'm forgetting about Kevin Bauman. So there there, hey, there you go. Michael, I mean you know this as the recruiting insider there. You know what song I always play uh, on signing day? Uh, Johnny Come Lately from the Eagles, the line about they'll never forget you till somebody new comes along. <laughs> well, let, let's and before we get out of here, as we're, we do with all these positions, X factor of the group. I mean, I, I would say really any of the four behind Mayor. Um, or maybe you, if you want to go with, you know, Mayor's continued growth is an X factor. You know, is he the same guy like as we saw in 2020? Does he take any regression more of you know because teams are doubling him or does he go from baby gronk to you know mid-size gronk i don't know lou what do you think well I, I, we know what we have with michael mayer there and that's that's going to be probably the third tight end in four years to depart for the pros after his junior season but uh you know, it's not the sexy pick. It's not the popular pick when you talk about a senior who hasn't really um, been in the action that much. But uh, you want to see George Takis. 
have that kind of there's always one a year at least a, a senior who hadn't really played much javon mckinley is an example last year who you say wow he waited his turn and uh it, it paid off and he's now in his last go around and obviously he has more eligibility after this too so it's not his last go around but it's still his senior year where it's time for him to emerge and however well he does develop in in that uh, fourth season I, I think will help dictate just how much of the multiple tight end sets Notre Dame wants to continue to employ yeah, my X factor here is is the guy I raved about, Cam Barong, again, seeing, you know, there's there's receiving tight ends, there's blocking tight ends, there's the guys who are both, um, I think Cam Barong's coming in with the tag that he's a receiving guy, I think that he can do both. Um, before we get out of here, Lou, like we do with every position, is this unit heading into the spring 2020, spring practice, you know, hopefully is about three weeks away as we're recording this. Is this unit better going into spring ball than it was in 2020? It's tricky because you have a Michael Mayer, a, you know, several months older, you know, better, more in, involved in the program. You bring in a Kane Barong, Kevin Bauman's year older, George Tax year older, but then you lose Tommy Tremble, um, who, who will be an NFL selection. So do we have much of an answer here? I would give the edge right now to last season because you did bring Tommy Tremble back with a good sophomore year, 16 catches, 187 yards, I think four or five touchdowns, and he graded out very well as a blocker. You knew what you had there as a blocker. And you had a proven senior, too, not, not as a pass catcher, but with Brock Wright, just somebody you could rely on there. And then you brought in – what might turn out to be a generational tight end. So from that perspective, I still have to give the edge to last year because while you have a phenomenal talent in Michael Mayer, you know, if you lost Tommy Tremble last year, you still had Mayer and Wright and Takis. Whereas if you lose Mayer this year, it's, it's not as proven element. Um, and you'd probably have to really restructure some things a little bit. Yeah, no, no arguments here. Certainly can, can, can see that. Good points. Well, that is going to do it for this show. Appreciate everyone watching. If you're on our podcast channel, we really appreciate you. Make sure you go over to blueandgold.com for all of your Notre Dame athletics coverage. And make sure you're subscribed to us wherever you get your podcasts. And if you're watching via YouTube, appreciate you as well. We really love our YouTube audience. Leave a comment. Do you agree with what we said? Do you disagree? Do you want to tell us we look handsome? Do all those things in the YouTube comments. And make sure to hit the thumbs up button on this video and subscribe for more content. We will catch you guys next time. Have a great weekend.